Hello and welcome back to Manifolds, the video series where we talk about integration on generalized surfaces. And indeed, in today's part 44, we will talk about the so-called change of variables formula on manifolds. It's similar to the one you might know from multivariable calculus, but the formula we discuss now is much cooler. In fact, I would say you will immediately remember this formula and never forget again. However, before I show you that, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And as always, you can use the link in the description to download additional material for all the videos. For example, you can download the PDF versions for the Manifold series or the books about linear algebra, real analysis and complex analysis. And if you have questions about any topic, you can just ask them in the community forum. And then without further ado, let's immediately state the formula of the day. And there you might already know that change of variables means that we go from one manifold M to another one N. This means we have a smooth map F between two manifolds. However, this is not enough because it also needs to be bijective such that we can go back from N to M without losing any information. And even there, we need an additional information for f inverse, namely, it should also be a smooth map. Hence, f is smooth in both directions, and this is what we usually call a diffeomorphism between manifolds. So please remember that, for the change of variables formula on manifolds, we need a diffeomorphism. Okay, and then we can formulate the formula because we have two integrals, one on the left hand side and one on the right hand side. And maybe let's say that we fix a volume form on the right hand side, so on the manifold n. And then we already know, in order to get a volume form on m, we can just use the pull back with respect to f. This means we have f star omega on the left hand side. And there the integration domain is simply the manifold m. And now it turns out that these two integrals give exactly the same value. And it is called change of variables because we go from the variables on n to the variables on m. In other words, it's a standard substitution rule now in the realm of manifolds. And in order to remember it, instead of n, we can also write the image of m. Because then you can see the whole substitution at work, this map f outside of the integral on the domain level goes inside the integral with a star. So you can remember this pullback works for these abstract integrals if we have a diffeomorphism. However, one little detail is still missing because as you might remember, we have defined the integral with an orientation on the manifold in mind. This means our map f also has to preserve this orientation. So we could say a positive orientation on m gets transformed by f to a positive orientation on n. So that's it, we don't flip any orientations and therefore the integrals are the same. Now before we go into the proof of this nice theorem, let's recall some important definitions here. And let's start by explaining what this pullback f star omega actually is. It's a differential form on the manifold M, so we can evaluate it at every point P in M. And then it's just an N form defined on the tangent space at the point P, so it gets N vectors as an input. So it gets N vectors from the tangent space, and maybe let's call them V1, V2, and so on. So here you see, we do everything on the left hand side on M, but actually omega is a volume form on the right hand side on n. This means we have to push these nice tangent vectors on the tangent space of m to the tangent space of n. And since we have a smooth map, we can do that by using our differential. More precisely, the differential of f at the point p. So dfp applied to v1 gives a tangent vector on n. Therefore we have to do that to all v vectors and then we get n tangent vectors on the right hand side. Hence these are our new inputs for the volume form omega. Or more precisely it has to be omega at the point f of p. 
And that's it. This is the whole definition of the pullback of omega under f. And now you see even more that going from left to right is just a substitution with this map f. However, at this point, I should maybe also write down the explicit definition of orientation preserving. Indeed, now it's quite simple to explain because we can just take such a basis as vectors in our attention space and say that this is a positively orientated basis. And now you know we can bring this basis to the right hand side to n by using our differential of f. And now we simply want that this basis on the right hand side is also positively orientated. The only difference is now that we live in tfpn. And now you see we call f orientation preserving if this one works for every p on m. Hence, f simply conserves such a positive orientation. And with that, you now know all the requirements of the change of variables formula, and we can go to the proof of it. And it turns out that this proof is not so complicated, because we have done the hard work already in former videos. Therefore, we just have to recall what we already know from the integral, namely that we can split up m into countably many subsets. And as before, let's call these subsets a1, a2, and so on. And now you might remember that the advantage of these subsets is that we can solve the integral in just one chart. This means we also have a corresponding atlas with charts that are also orientation preserving. And as always, we call these charts UKHK, where HK is the corresponding map. And then you know the map into a lower level in Rn, where the whole image of the set AK lies inside this subset. And this is all we need. The key thing is that we have such a decomposition of M. So we have countably many pairwise disjoint sets we call AK, where AK lies completely in UK. And then you know for this set AK, we can push the integration on the manifold to an integration in Rn. However, now please don't forget, we also have our diffeomorphism f. This implies that we can translate everything one to one from m to n. Everything that works on the manifold m also has to work on the manifold n. This means we can immediately write down an atlas for n as well. And maybe let's keep the name simple, let's take vk lk for the atlas of n. And now obviously vk is just the image of uk under f and lk is defined as a composition. Namely, first applying f inverse and then hk. Moreover, now we can also consider the images of the sets ak under f. And indeed, these give us a decomposition of the manifold m. And maybe a good name would be b1, b2 and so on. So the definition is quite simple, bk is just the image of ak. And since we have our one-to-one -one translation, we also know that we have pairwise disjoint sets on the right hand side. And moreover, the union of the bk's also has to be the whole manifold n. And with that we have everything, because now we can prove the change of variables just for such a set ak and bk. Because then, in order to get the whole integral, we just have to sum everything up. Okay, then let's calculate the left hand side integral f star omega. And now most importantly, the integration domain is just a set ak. This implies that we can push the integral to rn. Hence, it's actually just an integral over the image of ak. And the actual volume form we want to integrate is just the pullback with respect to our parameterization phi k. However, in order to make everything simpler and our calculation shorter, let's drop this index k and let's say we just consider a parameterization phi. This means in our integral we just have phi star f star omega. So two pullbacks combined and we have to know how we can simplify that. And indeed, what we actually want is to bring this to the parameterization we have on n. And let's call this one psi k or just psi. And again, you should see this translation is quite simple. We first apply phi and then f. Hence our psi is also just a composition. 
In other words, what we have to show now is that the pullback of Psi is actually what we have here. Therefore, let's do the same as before. Let's simply calculate with this differential form. This means we just have to fix a point X in Rn. And then let's put in N vectors chosen from Rn as well into the volume form. And now we can just apply what we already know for the pullback of a differential form. Namely, we just have to use the differential of our map phi. And moreover, we also have to use the image of x under phi. And that's it. This is all we have to do. Now we have the volume form on the manifold M. And then the next step would be to push it further to the original volume form on the manifold N. And this one we have already written down before. We just have to apply the differential of F. And moreover, the point of evaluation is F of phi of X. And there you should already see, this is exactly Psi of X. So indeed, you see we are almost there, we just have to put everything together. In particular, you should recognize that we have two differentials combined here, and this is the result of a chain rule. And in fact, it's simply the chain rule applied to Psi. This means we have two things we can substitute here. First, we have Psi of X. And second, we have D Psi at the position X. And this one is simply applied to a vector u1. And as always, this just continues until we have un. And now we should recognize that this is exactly the pullback formula just for the map psi. Therefore, we have psi star omega here. It's evaluated at the point x and the vectors u1 to un are put in. So you see, we have a really nice short formula here you should definitely remember. Namely, f after phi with a star is equal to phi star f star. In other words, our substitution, our abstract integral is quite simple with this formula. And in addition, we can also see our final result here. We simply see that we can rewrite our integral from before by using our psi star instead of the whole combination here. Therefore, the only thing missing here, and what we definitely have to change, is the domain of integration. And to see what to do there, let's recall the whole picture here. So actually what we want for the domain of integration here is LK of BK. So we need a chart of L and the image of BK. However, by looking at the whole translation and the definition again, we recognize that we actually have exactly the same image here in Rn. So maybe just to be precise, let's write it down. So we have LK of BK in the image. And by definition of our LK, this is just the image of this composition. However, if we apply F inverse to BK, we definitely get out AK again. Therefore, this results in HK of AK. So let's use this fact in our integral above, and then we are done. Because now we see this is simply our abstract integral of omega over bk. And there you see, the right hand side here is equal to the left hand side, and the only thing missing is that we have to go to the whole sum. And we can write that down, the last step is just forming the sum on both sides. And then we get our nice formula, we have the integral over m on the left hand side, and the integral over n on the right hand side. And with that the proof is finished, and you can see where the change of variables formula comes from. It's simply the substitution with the function f in an abstract setting. And why this formula is so useful, we will definitely see in future videos. So I really hope we meet again, and have a nice day. Bye bye.